Hey, welcome everybody to Q Plus EDU. We are super thrilled to have you here this evening. My name is Frederick. My pronouns are they, them. I am Out Youth's Texas GSA Network Coordinator, and I am here to help with recording this session today, but um, attendees don't need to worry. Only the folks who are currently on your screen on video are gonna be recorded, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, with that, I will pass it over to E. Hi everyone, I'm E, I use they, them pronouns. I am the founder of Q Plus EDU. Um, I'm here today mostly to moderate the chat and the Q&A. So if you have questions about anything, please feel free to drop those in the Q&A. Um, and then we'll have a question and answer session at the end um, where we will go through all of those. Additionally, as our panelists are speaking, I will drop any resources or links that they mention into the chat. Um, and those links will also be made available hopefully tonight after this session on our website. And then the recording of this session will be posted in probably a week or two. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Suzanne to introduce the panel. Oh, you're muted, Suzanne. Now am I good? Yay, all right. Thank you, uh, E and Frederick, and thank you so much for inviting us to be part of the Q Plus uh, EDU series. I am Suzanne Kearns, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I founded a group called the Informed Parents of Austin about three years ago in response to some parents in our neighborhood who were getting and spreading misinformation about some LGBTQ inclusive training that was going on in some of the schools in our area. Um, and I discovered a lot of my LGBTQ friends and friends who have kids who are LGBTQ were really already drained from fighting the daily fight of um, you know, standing up for their rights on a daily basis. So the last thing they really needed to be doing was going standing up in front of a school board. Um, you know, on a weeknight for a two hour meeting, um, just asking for basic dignities for their kids. So as one of my dearest friends told me, you know, being a lesbian doesn't make me an activist. And so I decided then and there it was time for me to basically use, for lack of a better term, my straight privilege um, to be able to pull from my emotional well and, and stand up on behalf of a lot of those kids um, and give a megaphone to the voice for people who either couldn't or just didn't have the time to go speak for themselves. So with that, I am going to uh, went over to uh, our wonderful panel. We've got representatives from both Inform, uh, Matt from Informed Parents of Austin, and then we also have some amazing uh, GLSEN representatives. So I'm going to hand it over to, what do you think, Cameron? You're in my top left corner. I'm going to start with you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Cameron Keffler. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I am an elementary school teacher at UT Elementary here in Austin. I've been involved with GLSEN for several years now, um, and as an educator, I get a really interesting insight from uh, to see how students and, and parents interact in, in kind of the day-to-day -day school cycle and why everything that we talk about with the LGBTQ plus community is so important. Um, and I'm excited to, to be here as well. So I'm going to turn it over to Jessica. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Sukup. She, her, hers pronouns. Um, I am uh, I'm, uh, uh, with GLSEN uh, in Austin, of course. Um, uh, the co-chair uh, of Lesson Austin, and then I'm also vice uh, board chair for the Transgender Education Network of Texas. Um, I got involved in this kind of activism and doing these things because um, when I transitioned, I was so thankful for the life that I had, and I knew that that life was uh, that I was standing on the shoulders of the people who the trans people uh, who came before me and the battles that they fought. And I was really desperate to pay it forward um, and try to make, uh, make things better for the people who would come after me. And, um, and so I, I spend a lot of time speaking uh, and doing these types of education events and panels and things like that. I'm gonna turn it over to Matthew. 
All right, thanks. My name is Matthew Shedd. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm part of the executive team of Informed Parents of Austin. And I got involved just as a parent. Uh, my family and I had moved schools, and I had a question just um, Pride Week. Our district celebrates Pride Week, and uh, one school really celebrated it and one didn't, and I didn't understand why that difference was. So um, I reached out to informed parents of Austin and I started going to uh, different uh, district meetings and campus meetings. And when I went to district meetings there, what, that was around the time Austin ISD was dealing with uh, sex ed. And uh, there was these voices coming up from like 20 years ago, like, I, like uh, you know, anti-LGBTQ that I experienced when I was a teenager. And I thought everything was, uh, was great because we had like Will and Grace and, and Glee and social media, like I thought everything was good. So it really kind of shed a light for me that uh, I need to stand up and kind of pave the way for our youth to feel empowered. Um, I feel like as adults, we, we, you know, we have marriage equality, now we have some job security, but um, our youth, when they're kind of figuring out who they are and, and, you know, wanting to belong, but also be individuals. It's really important for us to um, help them find that way. So uh, I'm gonna turn it back over to Suzanne. Wonderful, and thank you so much for your intros. And the, basically the format for um, what we're gonna be doing for our panel are some questions that we got from members of the Informed Parents of Austin, as well as some questions that I've just received over, over time. Specifically, I, I mean, this is for all, I want to say all parents, but I also do feel a certain responsibility, again, for, for those of us out there who don't necessarily, I'm using all these bad terms, dog in the fight. I, I feel like um, we just have, we come from a more neutral territory, and it's, it's not quite as emotionally draining for us to go and speak up for rights that don't necessarily affect us on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm asking other and pets, and for anybody who doesn't know what that means, it's cisgender, uh, heterosexual, uh, but basically straight cisgender people who um, who want to make sure that what the kids are taken care of and our community is taken care of. So these are the questions that we've gotten. So number one is why why should a parent of kids who aren't LGBTQ uh, plus care about being an ally of the community and these students? Yes, Cameron. Can I, can I go? <laughs> yeah, jump on in. Um, yeah, so I think, um, you know, it's important why parents should care. You know, parents want to um, create safe spaces for children and to learn and grow. And part of that is thinking about what you do for your children when they're young. You create protections, you know, baby gates, monitors, child locks. We instinctively put these systems and protections in place to make sure that kids don't harm themselves or hurt others. And, uh, part of caring is being, be, just being an ally is like providing that protection for the LGBTQ plus community um, from, from harming themselves and others. You, um, students are significantly less likely to cause harm to themselves um, when they feel supported. And so having, having that allyship is um, also kind of like having um, a little bit of protection. And then also thinking about what it means to be an ally um, you know, a lot of times there can be a misconception of being an ally means that you have to, to stand up or speak out, but sometimes it's just listening. And sometimes it's just helping to elevate voices and really being an active listener and being solution oriented. Um, and I think that, you know, as a teacher, I get to see children's brains. They're like sponges. They are, they're absorbing information all the time. And, and even the things that we don't say, the things that we do, the way that we interact, uh, you know, children absorb that. So, you know, your children are watching you, parents. They're seeing how you respond to situations and how you interact. And that, that teaches them how, you know, how they're going to become as people. You are a natural role model. Um, so visibility is a huge part of it. But um, you should care because it, it involves you whether you realize it or not. Yeah. And quite literally, it can involve parents whether they realize it or not. Uh, we've had at least two members of our community who have come and uh, direct messaged me or contacted me and said, you know, after going to these meetings or just kind of speaking up about it, being part of the group, um, that gave my kid 
the strength and then knowing that it would be a safe place to come out to me. And so that's, I mean, that's just remarkable. So, you know, even these people who are saying, you know, what, why should I care if my kid's not LGBTQ? You don't necessarily know that. <laughs> so, um, so it's good to be an ally right out of the gate. Um, even if for a selfish reason, it, it is your own kid. Um, so the next question is, I hear a lot is, won't it seem weird if I'm speaking on behalf of or wearing pride items for this community that I don't necessarily belong to? And that was one of my number one fears. Um, so I'd love to get your perspective on that. Um, absolutely. I think it's a fantastic question. I know it can feel weird representing the community that you may not feel like you belong to. Um, but it's not as weird when you're representing something that you feel super informed about and super um, attached to. And so thinking about the LGBTQ plus community, the foundation is inclusion. You know, I mean, that is that the ultimate uh, kind of thing that brings us together is, the, is, is acceptance and belonging and, and just being able to exist harmoniously. And that kind of makes you a part of the community just by being a person. You know, like it's all about celebrating being a human. Um, and so, I mean, you do have to be careful when you're, um, you know, wearing LGBTQ plus materials and trying not to perpetuate stereotypes and things like that. So there, there is some caution that comes to it, but um, ultimately it kind of comes back to uh, being an ally and helping with visibility and helping to, to show, I mean, people want to want to be able to see a safe person. Um, and I can speak personally, you know, growing up in East Texas, I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me all the time. Um, and so being able to, to, you know, whether it's a, a rainbow flag or whether it's some sort of message of acceptance or something, you know, it, it, can, it can alleviate a lot of anxiety when you can see someone who you can uh, identify as, as a safe person or um, a situation that can, can make you feel more comfortable. Yeah, that's great. And that leads into the next question is, what if I do it wrong? Um, I know a lot of people, especially trying to be you know, really good and sensitive with pronouns and they mess them up from time to time, um, worried that they're just going to make things worse. Any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I want to piggyback on something that Cameron talked about. I, I walked into an elementary school and one of the office staff had a pride sticker just by her nameplate. And I was so moved because I remember I know going to a school sometimes being a same sex couple, I feel like other and not welcome. And I think about what it was decades ago and just having someone in the office staff having that sticker, I was like, I got emotional and just sent a simple email like, thank you for doing that. That is so welcoming and it meant, it was probably a small thing to you, but it meant the world to me. So even that kind of, I don't know what silent strength, I don't know what it is, but it, it it changed my day. So I just want to say that. So you can't, uh, I don't know if you can really do it wrong, but I would say like if your intentions are in the right place and you're willing to be open to talking to people and learning things, no one's going to fault you for like a little oops. And um, people have come to me and it's like, oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, to me, it's the difference between uh, doing nothing <laughs> And trying to do something right if you don't speak up if you don't do anything people might not know there's an issue people might not know how many people really care as long as you're putting that effort i call that forward momentum energy you know doing something um, that can be a game changer for anybody um, if you're looking just to kind of like stick your toe in the water i say get on someone's mailing list or just get involved in in one organization that you research and um just see what they're they're doing because they might have an, an event that you want to go to and that's a great place to meet people ask questions because any organization i've i've met really wants you to be part of their network and will answer your questions and it's it's really like you want to be part of our community <laughs> come on in mm -hmm. um but I think sometimes being an ally is hard work because it's kind of a, a, a learn as you do type thing. Um, I will say even, you know, I'm kind of new to this myself. There's people who have had many years of obviously work and I've, I've misstepped. Um, I've used the wrong pronouns and um, it felt really bad, but you know, a quick, <laughs> it's a human skill, a quick apology, like, Hey, Sorry, I messed up. I'm going to do better next time. But I've even had people tell me, like, I'm doing it wrong. 
um, which in, in my mind, you know, the LGBTQ plus umbrella is big, it's diverse. So um, to me, we're gonna have diverse strategies, introverts, extroverts, you're all welcome. So um, there's not just one, one right way to do it. Yeah, and you brought up this idea of attending either some of these meetings or events to answer questions. I know I have a lot of people come up to me and be like, you know, I don't really have any LGBTQ plus friends to ask questions to. And part of me is like, well, even if you did, they should not you know, have the responsibility of being your encyclopedia of information. Um, but if they do, if people do have questions, like, you know, the Google's out there, but where are some like trusted resources for information? So kind of building on what, what, what's been said already, um, uh, you know, when we're talking just in the previous questions, when we're talking about things like allyship, um, uh, ju this visible allyship has value in itself because it gives other people the courage to, to, to show their allyship. And it gives, um, just as, as Cameron was saying, it, it, this, and you know, a little sticker on the, on the door, um, tells the students that, um, that that's a safe place for them to be. So where do you go for information? Well, when I first started coming out to people, um, because I was coming out to them and I was standing in front of them, very often they came, they asked me questions, but that's not, uh, that's often not the best choice. As I was coming out, it was a, it, it was a very confusing time. I had just, um, I had just found myself, found, discovered my identity, and um, I knew where I was going. I knew that the direction I was headed, but I didn't have all the answers. And so then when people asked me questions, those questions undermined my self-confidence, my decisions, and in, in many ways kind of functioned even in their quest for allyship, um, they functioned as like microaggressions that made me, made me question myself. So really, um, when possible, you should look outside, you should look elsewhere for that information. One local resource that's particularly good are, are PFLAG meetings. PFLAG used to stand for Parents and Friends of Lesbian and Gays, but um, the organization as a whole came to the conclusion that that wasn't an affirming enough title, and so they've, uh, they've just changed, and it's now PFLAG. Now, they do support groups all across Austin, um, and frankly, across America in small towns everywhere. They, um, I was speaking in Midland, Texas, and I walked into the sleep in Midland, Texas, and there was a PFLAG sticker on the door. I wasn't sure before I saw that sticker what I was what I was going to get as I'm checking in in Midland, Texas, but it definitely put my mind at ease just seeing that sticker. Um, so P Flag uh, has these support groups, and they run around Austin, like I said, across America, and the exact format of those groups uh, it varies from from uh, it, between the different organizations, but um, there's a support component and. Um, and so parents are, are friends, et cetera, of LGBTQIA people. And the, the, often the, 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 the LGBTQIA person themselves will, will go for support. Um, beyond that, books are uh, another great place to start. And, and like PFLAG, for example, has a downloadable um, guide that you, for uh, allyship that you, that's, that's really good. Um, and there are also a variety of books you can go. And of course, online is always a, a, a good place. Although, as you start looking at information, if the information isn't LGBTQI affirming, recognize that that's not the information you're looking for, because, you know, it's online and there's all kinds of stuff out there. Great. That is great information. And so, and one of the things I also wanted to direct people to, I get a lot of questions like, what are the basics I should know? Like, what are the top five things I should know? And it's kind of like, what are the top five things you should know about being a human being? I mean, it's just so complex and rich a question, but I would love to direct people to, um, and actually if they go to informparentsofaustin.com backslash or whatever they call it, um, to do, just the letters T-O-D-O, 
Um, we've got some links there to her. Actually, the um, Austin ISD new human sexuality lessons. And in particular, the fifth grade lesson in, on identity is kind of like the bare bones, like this is the bare minimum you should know um, before you, you know, start um, having ally type conversations. Um, there's really great information there. And then also the sixth grade identity has handouts for basic vocabulary as well. If you want to be more advanced and quiz yourself and see if you can uh, match terminology up with definitions. Um, a, the other bonus of getting some information from these particular lessons is it's going to give you some information about the new um, human sexuality curriculum that AISD uh, is putting together. Last year was supposed to be the rollout, but it, it happens in May. Um, so the curriculum, unfortunately, due to COVID, did not roll out. Um, but virtually they are working on getting that rolled out for next year. Um, there's a lot of misinformation and rumors about uh, this curriculum. So it's good to go and see it for yourself. Um, so there's a link. You can either just type in Austin ISD health curriculum and you can go, you can get all kinds of information um, in, in various languages. Um, and then also take a look at every single lesson for each of the grades. Um, so get your information on that. And it's, it's amazing um, how inclusive uh, it is to the LGBTQI um, plus community. I, we're so grateful for our board and our community for pulling together and saying how important this is for our kids. But so that being said, for people who say, you know, I get, I get this is important, but I'm so busy with my own family. Like, what are the little things that I can do that would make the most impact, you know, without taking an, an hour out of my day uh, when I'm so busy just trying to make dinner. So would love information on that. I have a few ideas on that for, for the busy parent. I think um, the big overarching theme, theme, I think, is you're being a role model, right, uh, for kindness and for being inclusive. So uh, you're, the biggest thing you can do is in your family or with your friends, be that role model. So that might be speaking up against uh, hate speech. Uh, a common one is like a kid saying, oh, that's so gay. Uh, mm, that's not, we're not going to put, put a negative spin on that. Uh, also challenging your assumptions or if someone posts something on Facebook, like, oh, is that really true? What's your source? Or mm, I, know, I didn't hear that. I heard this. So challenging some of those assumptions, um, spending, putting things in a positive light, like, um, oh, your GSA is having a clothing swap that's gender neutral. That's cool. Like a parent even just kind of throwing that out to their teenager, the parent might, you know, the, and not making a big deal about it, but the, it might get the teens kind of like, oh yeah, I guess that is kind of cool. Yeah, I never thought about that. And also asking kids what they think about things like, you know, oh wow, you know, LGBTQ community hasn't had federal job protections before. What do you think about that? Just kind of getting them thinking. Um, something I personally found that's been, really amazing in my life is uh, having coffee with people who think differently than me going to some of these sex ed meetings uh, there's people that I've been even at meetings when there's a break I'll, I'll talk to them and uh, just kind of understand it's we want inclusiveness so I try to be inclusive of their thoughts and kind of understand where they're coming from and I got some good res interesting <laughs> response oh my gosh hold on Sorry, my kids are trying to call me from the other room. Okay. <laughs> but like, you know, some people feel like they, they've been pushed out for their thoughts. Like, you know, we're, we're too extreme. Why don't you have your own gay school? And, you know, like separate but equal. I'm like, hmm, that's, that's an idea. So I'm just kind of seeing where their, <laughs> their head is. But also another person, um, we've had, we've been comparing notes on research and stuff and, we've actually found a lot in common. So building those bridges one-on-one -on -one is a really great technique. I think if you're looking for like a small step, getting on an organization's mailing list just to keep you up to date what's going on, whether you want something at the federal, state, local level, school, um, you know, kind of pick what you want just so you can kind of see what's going on. Maybe you get inspired by something. Often the events, um, going to one of their events is really cool. I know um, from my family, we went to uh, Austin Pride 
Um, you can find like it, maybe your work marches in the Pride Parade. For us, we marched with the school district and that was a cool opportunity to meet some of the school board trustees and uh, other family families uh, to connect with. Um, going to the uh, Aglyph Film Festival, I volunteered there one year and there was a mom whose son came out as trans and they volunteered together and it was a really cool just to get to talk to the, to the mom and she got to meet other parents and the teen got to meet some other teens. That was really cool. Um, and then, you know, if, if, if you don't wanna be in the limelight, donating, right? That could be money, like here's some money. I know some people have been like, I've been an advocate for 40 years, I'm, <laughs> I'm done here, take my money. Or they just went like, here's $20, I don't know what to do. You know what to do with the money better, please take it. Um, some groups need, um, they might need like furniture, let's say out youth is opening a new space or needs, you know, chairs or I don't know, whatever. It could be stuff, clothes um, uh, that might, uh, for kids that might be going through transition, they might not have the clothes. Um, and then also skills, donating skills, like if you're an awesome webmaster or you're a superstar accountant and you're like, hey, I can be the treasurer for your board. Um, think about think about your unique skills that you could donate yeah that's that's kind of off the top of my head i don't know <laughs> I don't that's, that's a great that. list that's an amazing list oh. um so um kind of to take it a little deeper for you know when your your kids specifically come to you with questions or maybe their friends do and like how do you best advise them when when you don't understand what they're going through and, and you're afraid for what they might be going through or their future and that, how do you handle that so um, the most important thing to remember is that the world today does not look like it did when, when, when we were kids. Um, I, I, when, I, uh, when I was in high school in the 80s and, you know, when my kids were young in the 90s, um, uh, you know, the, the concept for, for me in particular, the concept of being transgender was not even on the, was not even on the radar that I didn't nobody talked about those those things and we didn't i didn't understand um and and homophobia was completely accepted and even frankly assumed when i was in high school and the word queer was an insult the college meanwhile the college students that i advise that are entering the university um uh, now well uh they they very commonly identify as queer and agender and so the, the world is in a different place. And so we have to recognize how, how the world has changed. And, and from that, we have to think about, as we're talking our, with our kids and we're working with our kids, we have to think about how to advise them in the world today, not based on the information that we learned when we were growing up. Um, and that is not always the easiest task. Uh, we, we often have to confront uh, some things that we learned and um, and try to work through that and try to understand uh, how you work with the child in order or the student um, in order to understand uh, and and advise them properly um, so my advice to people is is to take the time and 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 think about the things that you say uh, or are going to say before they leave your mouth. One of the things that mm -hmm. was often said to me um, was as the, the term real women don't do that. Well, um, I'm a real woman and I did it, so therefore apparently they do. And, but if you think about that, that term, that, that phrase and how insidious that is, undermining my identity, my confidence in myself and my gender presentation all in the span of a few words. Mm -hmm. So as you're talking to people, as you're talking to your, your, your kids or your kids' friends, pause for a moment and think about the words that you're saying before you speak them because those words can echo in, in the kids' heads for a very long time. Um, but it is possible and you can do it and you, you, you can advise them. Talk to them, listen to what they have, what they're saying, and listen, ask them what their goals are and help them work towards their goals. 
That's great, great advice. And so we've covered a lot of questions that kind of more grouped around like how how we can be better as individuals or within our families or with our kids' friends that are in our circle. But I um, want to talk about some questions we get around what to do um, around school and the district. And um, so one of the questions and one of the ways I know that Matt got involved um, with the Informed Parents of Austin was because of a school that was not um, you know, celebrating pride in the way that other schools were. So, you know, other than that, what are some of the best ways to find out if your child's school is welcoming and supportive of LGBTQ students and, and how can how can parents help? Yeah, I could, so for, or do you, you want to come in or? I mean, I, I'll say something real quick and I'll go for it if you don't mind. Um, so I, I was going to say starting with district websites and looking at, um, you know, mission statements and um, a lot of websites have policies put in place like anti-bullying policies and stuff, but you can look really more specific at the wording um, and, and really paying attention. Do you see, you know, words like identity, orientation, expression, and looking for are those um, protections prioritized? And then, um, you know, my, my mom always said the, the best way to really get information about a school is to talk to the PTA because they're always in the know, you know, to, to find out what's really happening. Um, but, you know, attending SHAC meetings or Ed Council meetings or having coffee with the principal and also asking your administration, you know, hey, here's a scenario. What is your policy if this happens or how would you react with this, you know, and present it to them directly. Um, but go ahead. No, that was almost exactly what I was going to say. Like, um, if you have a question, go to your resources online. If you're not seeing a clear policy, go to the board meeting. And it, I think sometimes people think when you go to a board meeting, you have to be mad as hell, right? It, it's fine in those two minutes you get to be like, hey, I noticed this isn't here. I really have this question. And often you'll find, you know, depending on your school district, I think Austin Independent School District is a little bit more open than others but usually on uh, there's some trustee that will reach out to you and be like oh here's this this or the superintendent be like oh we don't have that and, and it'll get the the wheels going on that um i know for like austin Penn school district we have pride week that coincides with national coming out day and we had a community engagement they sent out pride packs to every school so we know that every school has pride flags and stickers and and buttons and stuff so for like for those schools we say like well your campus has it you need to go to those campus advisory council meetings and ask but you're right also the, the btas know what's going on that's where all the good stuff happens right the the gossip <laughs> <laughs> and i'm glad you brought that up matt because a lot of the schools who either because they don't have a supportive principal or just they haven't had the parents even ask about it. You know, they, they haven't celebrated Pride Month, even though other schools in the district do and the district thinks that they do. Um, and it really, unfortunately, is kind of on a principal by principal basis. And that's something that we have been talking to the, uh, the board members about trying to make more of a district-wide policy that no, there's a bare minimum you need to be doing. Um, but yes, and, and keep, Keep posted with uh, Informed Parents of Austin for how we're going to be doing that uh, virtually. <laughs> I, I don't know that we have necessarily an answer yet, but um, since that is uh, usual, I don't think the kids will be quite in school yet. Um, and it's going to be a little different this year. Um, so I'm sure that CTX GSA has some great information about uh, what the GSAs can be doing for that too. Um, so stay tuned. Um, and speaking about COVID, I know I've, I don't know if anybody has any banter answers than I do about um, how to support LGBTQ students during COVID. I know that one group that we particularly love, Out Youth, um, they usually have, you know, on-site um, either counseling or just peer groups, um, but they've done so many of their amazing programs now are online virtually. Um, so you can actually find that at outyouth.org slash uh, go virtual. Um, and also, if you forget that, I've got a link on, on the, the to-do list over at the Informed Parents of Austin page, um, if, you, if you don't find that. Um, but anybody else know about stuff that's going on <laughs> virtually um, or things that they can be doing during COVID? <laughs> We're all kind of learning and feeling our way through it right now, I think. I, I just I just know as a parent like I'm 
I know what I'm going through and some days are really good and some days aren't so great. And like, I know I have to really work on my communication with my husband and like, am I being a jerk because I'm mad about this or something that he did. So I'm really also having to check in with my, my, myself about my, how I'm interacting with my kids. Right. Like, okay, they're, they're acting up. Like what might be triggering this and like really kind of identifying like, man, I have two kids. So like they've been bouncing off of each other, but like, is it, are they, do they need to get out and go play outside? I really try to make space that if they're yelling and bouncing off the walls that like I have to keep myself calm and be like, okay, wh what's going on? What are you feeling? Really having, the, just checking in emotionally with them. And uh, um, also I think with teenagers, it's really easy for them to pull back right into whatever technology or whatever and not there's a lot that they don't say so really just kind of extending that and maybe even drawing some i don't have teenagers yet but just trying to like <laughs> draw some of some of that out with um because it's not always easy teenagers are really good about keeping their cards close i think yeah. and so i just want to bounce back real quick uh, people have a lot of these questions about which meetings to attend there's so many of them all the acronyms can be a little overwhelming pta and cac which is the campus advisory council shack the school health advisory council school board meetings um i know matt you and i have probably been to all of them i know i've been with you jessica too and many a meeting um like which uh, I know PTA is kind of in the know of everything. CAC usually seems to have a little more power or the ear of the principals. I, um, Matt, can you talk a little bit about kind of your your observations from attending so many of those meetings? What are the most valuable? How to keep in touch with them? For sure. I will. Cameron, I saw that you might want to add in something that I don't want to jump over. The it, it, well, I was just going to kind of add on to what you were saying, like agreeing about keeping your own mental headspace, um, especially with students during COVID. I, I'm, I'm actually starting to teach this week. I'm, I'm getting students virtually and having to remind myself to stay grounded and practice self-care so that I can portray a positive and safe way for students to feel ready to, um, to, to get in a headspace of learning if, you know, during this crazy time. That's all I was going to say, but um, I appreciate it. Thank you. No, I'm glad you jumped back to that, Matt. Thanks for catching that. I didn't see you jumping in there, Cameron. Um, so no, I, and thank I just you wanted... to all of our teachers. I bow to all of the teachers. Um, thank you for all you're doing to keep yourself mentally healthy and our, and our kiddos. So I wanted to just piggyback on that too and, and just remind everyone that, that um, you know, especially for LGBTQI students, they uh, rely very much on their friends for the support to deal with the day-to-day -day struggles. And if those friends, they can't see them, they can't hang out to them, or maybe uh, their friends aren't out at home, they can't talk to them, you know, retreating into the technology is one way to do it. But just try to give your, your kids the space or, or, and the the, the environment where they can talk about all of that. That's a great point. So go, going to kind of all those meetings that parents can attend, um, kind of at the like campus level, I think PTA and CAC are the two big ones. So PTA main goals are like fundraising, student programming, and parent education. I think fundraising is a, a good one. We had a parent inform parents who use some PDAs often will have fundraising in the fall and then spring they'll have extra money and they're like hey what should we spend this money towards um she made a bid or what a proposal and they modernized the bathrooms in their school which means gender neutral right so that was a great use of pta funds also um parent education i went to one elementary school and they have an lgbtqia parent group just, I went and then got, got some great handouts and it was really cool just to be in community with other families like that. Um, for CAC, now that's Campus Advisory Council. Uh, every campus has to have that and that's like an advisory committee to the principal. That's something you have to apply to and be accepted, but they have citizens communications. So you can attend if you're on there or not, but you can't always, talk but during citizens communications you have two minutes to bring up any issues right so um that could be you know training of your teachers how we're going to celebrate pride how we're going to roll out sex ed what books do we have in the library that are lgbtqia 
um, and then maybe addressing things about school cultural. How do we celebrate different weeks or months? That would be something to bring up. At the district level, I think there's two big ones. There's SHAC and there's the school board. So SHAC stands for School Health Advisory Committee Council. 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 You got <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so that that's district level. They advise the superintendent or the executive to the superintendent. And that would cover all health issues, uh, health issues, um, things that LGBTQI to, to me are like mental health, uh, how we deal with that, um, something could, like athletics and, and gender or locker room issues might be something there, sex ed, uh, the SHAC makes recommendations on um, material that would be appropriate. That if you want to be on your shack, that also you have to apply to and be accepted, but you can attend all of them. You can be part of citizens communications and say uh, your piece that bring up any issues. And there's school board, which um, I think maybe is one of the easiest because you can watch it online because those sometimes go into the middle of the night. So you can have yourself a glass of wine while you hear people <laughs> talk. Um, you can also email your trustees. Um, or you can go to the board meetings. Uh, you, I, I don't know what the rules are right now. You get a minute or two minutes at some point in the programming uh, to talk. And um, some, if you're interested in like policy, training district-wide, um, funding where funds are going, um, or if something's like not going right at your campus and you've tried to work with administration, it's not going there, I think the school board is a, is a good place to go. So those are my four big ones, PTA, CAC, shack and school board i think that's great and i do want to do a quick uh both a hurrah for our current school board uh the trustees they uh, voted unanimously in favor of the inclusive sex ed curriculum that is going to be rolling out um but i know at least three of them the, their terms are coming up and these are not necessarily the sexiest elections especially in such a big dramatic presidential election year but they can be some of the most important people you will ever vote for. So get serious about the school board and those people. And I believe, ooh, I say the deadline may have just passed for people who are going to submit, who are going to be running for those positions. So um, we'll continue to keep people up to date on those positions. Um, and you need to get people in your community informed about uh, the school board because it's one of those that you're like, oh, that name sounds nice, or, you know, you just go alphabetically, um, and these are some serious positions when it comes to our kids, so that's soapbox. Um, and so speaking of that curriculum, there's so many rumors and questions about it that we get. I just like to direct everybody right to the Austin ISD website. Um, if you just Google Austin ISD health education, um, there's a page that goes about the history of it. Um, you can look at each of the lessons for the people who are saying we're forcing this on, on parents. There are opt out all of the lessons individually. Um, people can opt out if they don't feel it's appropriate for their child. Um, so there's all the material you can need in multiple languages on that site. So I encourage you to uh, go there and check it out and familiarize yourself and maybe take some of the lessons. Like I said, uh, some of your 101 information can come from those. Um, and I also want to do, a, uh, before we kind of wrap up the education part, a quick plug. Um, what, what Austin ISD is doing for sex ed is a phenomenal first step, but the fact is there are hundreds of other school districts in Texas um, that don't, those kids don't have the benefits of this wonderful and important education. Um, so Texas Freedom Network is working diligently in uh, all hours of all days um, trying to make sure that the state board of education who is putting together uh, the new health curriculum i think for the first time in like 20 years um, they are going to be um, over the next three months we're trying to get people and parents to write letters to them in support of comprehensive and inclusive sex ed um, the current standards don't even include any reference to lgbtq students they don't include reference to topics like consent. It's just so antiquated. Um, and I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, we're, we're in such kind of like Matt was saying, oh, we've got will and grace. We've got all these things. Like it must be, it must be all modernized and it's just not. Um, so you need to get, that's probably one of the easiest 
um, things that you can do. Texas Freedom Network has a Get Involved page, um, and they are doing virtual letter writing. Um, so if it's something where you don't even know what to put in a letter, you don't know what you don't know, um, you can either um, join on to someone else's letter, virtual letter writing party, um, or if you are feeling real motivated, you can do your own uh, letter writing party. So I encourage people to get involved with that. We're trying to make sure that these letters are going to the State Board of Education members over the next um, two to three months before the final vote goes into the new um, curriculum. So with that, let's see, we've got about 15 minutes left. I want to make sure um, we talk a little bit about these resources before we go to the full Q&A. Um, and especially because this is one that um, I've run into personally and then also um, that we get a lot in the group as uh, when, when our kids' friends come out to them as uh, transgender and they don't know. I, I think that there's more familiarity with ideas if someone comes out as gay or lesbian, but there's just, there's so many more nuances um, to coming out as trans. And I would love for you, Jessica, to, to give us some information on how, how to handle this when our, when our kids come to us and, you know, they want to be supportive and we want to be supportive of their friend and, and don't even know where to start. So um, uh, I get the, the confusion and you're right. There's so much nuance. I mean, sometimes when I'm doing trainings, I'll share um, a, a, a list of gender identities that has more than 500 different options on it. Mm -hmm. um, and the, my, my point here and even saying that aloud is not to intimidate people, but to say it's not as important to, it's not like you, it's not reasonable to think you should go memorize all, all terms for gender identity. What it is, what is uh, most important is to try to find out, figure out how to treat the, either your child or your child's friend with respect. What does that look like? And, um, and the way to do that is, of course, to listen to them. Pronouns are very important, um, but if you do make mistake, as Matthew alluded to, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm sorry, I'll do better. And then you move on. You don't make it about you. Don't make a big dramatic, oh my God, you know, it's mm -hmm. a apologize and move forward and use the name that they give you. Uh, and they ask you to use for them. And, um, and so, like I said, focus on those things that, that they, that they need or focus on, on ways to, um, to affirm their gender identities and listen to what they have to say. Um, but as you do this, recognize that uh, they may be out to you and no one else. And so you have to be conscious of that as you're communicating with other people because outing them can be very, um, very harmful to their, to their lives. Just if you are there and you are a person that is supportive in their life, um, uh, you can make an incredible difference, even if you are the only one. The, the rate of uh, suicidal ideation in the trans community is, uh, is, is very high. Um, in fact, there are many circumstances in which I'm the only trans person in the room who hasn't attempted suicide. And the reason, one of the reasons that those suicide, uh, the suicide rates, the suicidal ideation rates are so high is because for many trans uh, people, especially trans youth, they have no one in their lives who uh, uh, supports them and affirms their identity. Simply being that person can change their lives. So take it seriously treat them with respect, do the research you have to do, um, and make a difference. Thank you so much. Um, and I did also want to do along those lines a shout out for um, if, if you are choosing to do the donation route of allyship, uh, the Transgender Education Network of Texas is an amazing organization. And I know that Jessica has been involved with them as well. Um, so that might be a way that you want to um, to do a little funding uh, to make sure that these kids are taken care of. And one of the last things I want to wrap up with is that, um, and something I know that Glisten is very involved in, is 
making sure that not just the teachers, but school employees, everyone from you know janitorial staff to bus drivers to um, the after school care, uh, making sure that they are also informed, educated, and understanding and respecting the LGBTQ students. Um, Cameron, do you want to talk a little bit about the, the part that Glisson plays for that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so Glisson is an organization that does a lot of trainings uh, for, for schools, for teachers, for staff. Um, and one of the cool things about Glisson is that everything that they do for the school in, in terms of the training is free. Um, and it makes it easy to kind of kind of pitch that to a district and sort of help navigate there by using everyone's favorite four letter F word, which is free. Um, and so uh, in, in terms of actual communication, I think it's important to, to know. So from the teacher side, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm at a school uh, with UT where we do a phenomenal job of keeping everyone in the loop of, of everything that's happening in terms of like with emails and updates and we have calendar reminders and apps and we're all, everyone you know, kind of has that community value. We're also a very small school, we only have about 300 kids. So it's easier to stay informed. For larger districts, when you think about um, all the staff, I think it's important that um, you know, teachers are required to have certain professional development days. And it's important that we encourage our administrators to utilize those days with trainings that incorporate everyone, whether it's someone who works in the cafeteria or someone who is in the classrooms after hours, because um, just having the more exposure to, to, to safe and inclusive practices, the more that that can be spread amongst everyone else and, and feeling um, in that way. And some schools do a pretty good job of it, some don't, um, but, and as a parent, one of the things that you have kind of an advantage of is that external pressure. You know, as a teacher, it's not always easy to go up to an administrator and say, hey, we need to do this, 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 or I was thinking this, 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 what are your, what are your thoughts? Kind of testing the waters. But um, as a parent, you know, your, your input and your ability to advocate um, really is just, it's, it's so powerful. It really is. Um, and so... I think it's important to remember kind of what everyone's been saying, you know, find your organizations, get in, get involved with the emails and the meetings and, and make sure that you are, are, the more, the more parents that are pushing towards a certain, a certain goal for the school, the more likely that the school can pay attention to it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I muted my dog, sorry, <laughs> I didn't remember. Um, so I think that's the end of our questions that we had gathered from within our group. I don't know, Ian Frederick, uh, is, do you have any questions that have come in through the discussion that I'll make sure we've got like the last few minutes here to answer those? Yeah, um, so there are a few questions that have come through the chat. Um, so someone asked Matthew, which is the AISD school that has a parent LGBTQIA group with handouts? They would love to connect with the head of the group. Um, that was Dawson Elementary School. Uh, they have a group and they, uh, for Pride Week, they have a Pride Parade. Um, and something they do that's really clever is also uh, with that, they celebrate, uh, I, I've seen it in the past, I think two years they do a family crest. So you're really kind of celebrating your family, which I think is age appropriate at that level to celebrate um, family structures, diverse family structures, but Dawson Elementary School. Awesome. Let's see. Uh, someone else just left a note in the chat. Um, they said, hi. Uh, this is from Jennifer Littlefield. They said, hi, I am a member of Informed Parents and I'm running for the District 5 AISD board seat. I hope to continue the board's good work, making sure our schools are inclusive and use science-based curriculum. Um, and they put their website, which is www.jennifer4aisd.com. Um, so that is there. It's in the chat if anyone would like to check that out. Um, and then someone also asked if there is any advice on supporting young people who are not in affirming homes. Are there any services that do texting for these youth so they can get support over the phone? Um, that, 
I was actually kind of hoping Frederick would jump in here with because I think out use of virtual services that it looks like I don't I don't you know necessarily use them but um uh, from what I've seen uh, that's available online it's really extensive and comprehensive and I know that in real life they do so much amazing work I I've got to imagine virtually they're doing the same yeah, absolutely. Um, Out Youth has a virtual drop-in uh, four nights a week, Monday through Thursday, that um, youth can jump on. Um, it is through Zoom, so for students who have limited access to technology, it's not the best option. Um, for chat services, there's Q Chat Space is an option um, for students. Um, and the Trevor Project has a phone line and a chat line. and um, Centerlink is a great resource for finding LGBTQ um, organizations across the country. And I'm forgetting one, but at least one more. Jessica, was there, what were you gonna say? I was talking about the Trevor Project, so you got me, you got it. There's also the LGBT National Youth Talk Line that I dropped in the chat, and then PFLAG has a list of I think it's pretty much all of the LGBT talk lines, hotlines, everything. So I'm finding that and dropping that as well. Oh, and Trans Lifeline. Um, Trans Lifeline is the only crisis hotline in the country that is staffed exclusively by trans folks. Um, so anyone who's trans, gender nonconforming, non-binary, um, who is in crisis of any kind, it's not only a suicide hotline, um, and Trans Lifeline also does micro grants. So um, if someone's having trouble paying light bills, if you need help, um, you know, paying for your name change, stuff like that, um, Trans Lifeline is wonderful. And they recently started um, offering services in Spanish as well. So highly recommended. And E, we, uh, for most of the time we get questions about uh, doing GSAs at school, I usually direct them to CTX GSA to get more information, but do you have any other resources that you recommend for people who are trying to either figure out how to get people involved or just putting together the general rules and, and you know, bylaws of their group? Yeah, for sure. Um, so yes, I am transitioning out of my role at CTX GSA, but people can reach out to Frederick. Uh, they're the coordinator of the Texas GSA network. So they have resources and things for that. Um, and then there's also the Stories and Numbers Project has a lot of toolkits and things about starting and sustaining a GSA. Um, so I'm dropping the link to that website in a chat. Um, so there are resources, you know, not only about how to run a GSA and how to deal with administration if you face pushback, but also how sponsors can best support their students and other things like that. Um, and then there's also the National GSA Network, uh, and they have a ton of other like PDFs and resources. I'm pretty sure there are multiple guides on how to start a GSA. Uh, so that's in the chat as well. And then there's also GLSEN, and GLSEN has a ton of resources um, just for all of the things. So not only are there things about, again, starting and sustaining a GSA, um, but also just about like, uh, I'm looking at the resources page right now, they have a discussion guide for the show Love Victor. Um, they have guidelines for respectful GSA spaces. They have planning guides for a uh, day of silence and things like that. So I highly encourage you to click around on the GLSEN website. Uh, I don't and, know if And they that. also have an ally week every year. So for, yeah, for the ally do. conversation, um, we'll definitely be bringing that up on the Informed Parents of Austin group. Um, but just to be aware, um, if you are looking for more information on how to be a better ally, they have entire documents, research, um, and even pins and buttons you can get um, to help support. Yeah, and the National GSA Network, to echo what you were saying, um, is really, um, for the past few years at least, has been really um, working towards racial justice work as well. And that's, they're like focusing their efforts on, um, especially the queer and trans youth of color. And so a lot of their efforts and a lot of their outreach um, is in that area. And so there's tons of resources there. Um, the other thing that I want to plug, especially for educators, is uh, teaching tolerance. 
if you need lesson plans on anything, they're amazing. And like anything from LGBTQ community to like having Muslim students in your class to having immigrant students in your class. And they just run the gamut of how to like teach tolerance to different communities. That's great. And we're always learning too. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty involved and informed in this stuff and I've heard at least five sites that I need to go check out. So um, I've learned a lot from this discussion and I hope, I hope everybody else does too. All right. Is there anything else we need to wrap up, Edie? Are there any more questions? I don't see any more questions. No, um, but I am going to plug tomorrow's session. Uh, this one is called How to Be a Supportive Parent from a Queer Adult. Uh, so the link to that is in the chat. Uh, it's hosted by Bree Jenkins, who is amazing. She's wonderful. Uh, and she's just going to talk about how parents can be more supportive. Um, and that is tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central Time. So I hope you'll join us for that. Um, and we also love to get feedback. So if you'd like to give us feedback on this session or any of the other Q plus EDU sessions that you've attended, um, you can fill out our feedback form, which is also going in the chat. Um, so that's there. Uh, and like I said at the beginning, I, the resources that have been mentioned throughout this presentation will be posted either tonight or tomorrow. We'll see what I get around to. Um, and then the recording of this session will be posted in about a week. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank, thank you awesome. so much for inviting us to be part of this. And thank you, E and Frederick, for organizing this wonderful program. The topics have been amazing and I encourage everyone to go back and look at some of the past recordings and videos of the ones that they've missed. They're phenomenal. Yeah, we've got lots more coming up. If you're interested in prison abolition or immigration justice or art or, um, oh, what are the other ones? There's a whole bunch of them. Look at the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, wonderful. thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Bye, everyone. Bye.